Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to this week's Integrated Math video of the week. I don't know, something like that. Uh, so just to give you sort of some more ideas on how to do the things, um, this week I'm going to teach you guys, if you haven't already learned it, a really cool thing called synthetic division. So previously, last week, we learned about how to do long division, right? So if I had, say, I'm trying to make this, it's really an awkward angle to write in, sorry. So if I were taking like x plus 3 divided by 5x squared minus plus, I say one thing and do another thing, uh, let's make that cubed, make it a little longer, plus 6 x squared minus 3x plus 9, I don't know, some random polynomial. Then just for a quick review, let's go through how we would do this. So first thing we do is we look at this x and this 5x cubed, and we'd say, what do I need to multiply this x by to get 5x cubed? And the answer would be 5x squared. So that's going to be my first term here. So then I take that and I multiply it to this whole thing, and I say 5x squared times x cubed, or x squared, <laughs> x cubed, 5x cubed, plus 5x squared times 3 gives me 15x squared. And then I want to subtract these two things, so I'm going to change my signs, those cancel, and I get negative 9x squared minus 3x, right? So then, I'm going to say, okay, what do I need to multiply x by to get negative 9x squared? And that's going to be negative 9x. So then I multiply negative 9x squared. Negative 9 times 3 would be negative 27x. Then I change my signs because I'm subtracting them. Those cancel. I get 24x. Bring down my 9 plus 9. Again, what do I multiply by? 24. I get 24x plus uh, 1272, presumably. Um, subtract, subtract, cancel, and I'm going to get negative 63, right? So then I would say plus negative 63 over x plus 3 for my remainder. So that's how I do long division. Now what you're going to learn this week, aside from, I mean, we're going to get a synthetic division in a moment, is the cool thing about this remainder here uh, a couple cool things about that remainder there. So I'll leave that for the this week's Khan Academy lessons or your book work. But essentially, it's some cool stuff. Um, it tells you whether it's a factor. This is not because it's not zero. It tells you what the value is if I plug in uh, three to both, of, or negative three, I believe, to both of these x's and then solve it out, then I would get negative 63 for that value. Uh, that's the remainder theorem. So cool stuff you're going to learn this week. Um, but in order to get that remainder, we're going to have to do a lot of division. And this long division stuff, while relatively straightforward in that it's just long division, is a little bit tedious, as you might have noticed. So what I'm going to teach you today is how to do the same process with something called synthetic division, hence the title. So if I have these two same polynomials that I'm trying to divide, since I've already done it, let's do it again. Um, what I'm actually going to do, guys, is I'm just going to sort of get rid of all of this because I want more space. So with synthetic division, it's doing the same thing, but it's with this algorithm that makes it really quick and relatively painless. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my synthetic division box or workspace, whatever you want to call it. So if I have x plus 3 is what I'm dividing, I'm going to change the sign. So this is a plus 3, I'm going to make it minus 3. And I'm going to just put that outside of a little box thing. And then inside the little box thing, I'm going to put all of my coefficients. And it's really important, A, to make sure that they're in descending order, just like it is with long division, and B, to make sure that any coefficients that are missing, we put in a 0 for. So if, for example, I'd have x to the fourth minus x plus six, I would have, for my coefficients, one, x to the fourth, zero for x to the third, zero for x squared, negative one for x, and six. 
And I'll do an example with maybe this one in a minute. But for now, I'm doing this one right here. So this one is just descending order, right? It's already set up. We're not skipping anything. We're just working out well. So I'm going to write 5, 6, negative 3, 9. And all I need to write is the coefficients. I don't need to worry about um, the x's at all at this point. All I need is numbers. So then what I'm going to do is my first number, I'm just going to bring straight down, and I'm going to put it right here. So just bring it down, rewrite it. And then I'm going to take the number down here and multiply it to this up here. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. And then I'm going to add these two terms. No changing signs. The only sign we changed was this right here. From there, we just straight add. So 6 plus negative 15 gives me negative 9. So I'm going to write that here. Usually you write a little arrow there to sort of show what you're doing. So then I take negative 9 times negative 3, and I'm going to get 27. And then I'm going to take negative 3 plus 27, and I'm going to get 24. We could put little arrows like this. We could just make all the arrows in the world. You don't have to. <laughs> 24 times 3, negative 3, I already did, and I forgot what it was, was 72, right? Negative 72. So we're going to go up to there. And then 9 plus negative 72 is going to be negative 63. So you'll notice that all of these numbers are these numbers. How cool is that? And all we had to do was a little bit of multiplying and a little bit of adding, and that's it, and we're done. I mean, we're not done, we're almost done. So from there, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put a little box around my very last term, and I'm gonna say that last term is my remainder, as we saw up here. Negative 63 is my remainder. You're gonna care about this remainder, like I said, for remainder theorem, factor theorem, etc. Uh, so, that means that this has to be my constant term, right? This has to be my x term. And this, this looks like a division sign. That's no good. I'm getting rid of those lines. Sorry. I just want to make sure we're not really confused. Constant, x term, x squared term. So if I were to write my answer, I'd have 5x squared minus 9x plus 24 plus negative 63 over x plus 3 because that's what I was originally dividing by, even though I sort of lost it and I just put a negative 3 there. And once again, that's my answer with a whole lot easier way to do it. Cool. So let's do another example. Let's do that x4 minus x plus 6 since I wrote it out. It's going to be kind of boring. Um, let's just divide it by, I don't know, what do we want to divide it by? x minus 5, say. Oh, here it is. x4. This is a different problem altogether. <laughs> x to the fourth minus x plus 6 divided by x minus 5. Let's take this down here and do it. So remember, the first thing I want to do is I want to take this divisor and change the sign. So x minus 5, I'm going to put a plus 5 on the outside of my box. And then on the inside of my box, I've got x to the fourth minus x plus 6. So my x to the fourth is going to be 1. My x to the third is going to be 0 my x squared is going to be 0, my x is negative 1, and my constant is 6. Right? A whole different problem here. So then I'm going to do the exact same thing as I did before. Now that I've set it up, I'm going to take my 1, I'm going to bring it straight down. I'm going to take 5 times 1 is 5, and then 0 plus 5 is 5. 5 times 5 is 25. 0 plus 25, this is getting big, is 25. Sometimes they do this. They get a lot of hand very quickly when you just make up numbers. 25 times 5 is 225, I think. <laughs> and negative 1 plus 225 is 224. Oh, geez, I'm going to need my calculator. Oh, arrow. And then 224 times 5 is a big number. This is what happens when you just randomly make up problems, you guys. This is why the book has much nicer ones for us. 224 times 5 is 1,120 plus 6 is 1,126. So that's my remainder. So my answer, this is my constant x, x squared, x cubed. It's going to be x cubed 
plus 5x squared plus 25x plus 224 plus 1126 divided by x minus 5. So got a lot of control, but the process was still easy. It was just some slightly difficult multiplication that we had to deal with. Um, Wait, two, oh, 25 times five. I was like, wait, that was, that was all wrong. Yeah, 125, I was incorrect. 125, this would be 124. This would be 124 times five. Sorry, now I'm just correcting on my work is 620. So that would be 626, so that'd be 626. Sorry, uh, that I realized I thought I was, I was multiplying it by 25, not five. Um, I went, oh yeah, that's wrong. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, mathematical errors notwithstanding, that's how we're going to do that. So that's synthetic division in a nutshell. It's really pretty easy. It's just a little algorithm that you have to sort of work through. You don't have to use it. You can always use long division if you prefer to use long division. Um, but this is a lot faster and a lot less paper intensive. So it's just another option, another way of solving the same problem. Um, if you go to Khan Academy, there is a video that connects long division and synthetic division so that you can really, really understand why everything is what it is. Um, you probably got sort of a feel for that when we did this by long division and then we did it by synthetic division because we ended up with like all the same numbers, right, that we were adding and subtracting. Um, turning this into a negative is what lets us do the subtracting part. And other than that, it's... Um, just quite similar long division, just doing it all in sort of one easy, not really one easy step, but one easy line. Uh, so anyway, that is synthetic division for you all. Hopefully that is helpful. Um, let me know if you have any questions or concerns or confusions. Um, do, you know, read through the sections. Don't just try to do the work without reading the sections because you won't understand what you're doing. Um, Photomath is a really valuable tool for checking your work or helping you understand a problem. It is not, however, a valuable tool for copying all of your answers. Uh, make sure you're doing your own work, guys, because I'm seeing a lot of Photomath or other application along that line, uh, work and answers being copied. Um, and yes, I can tell. <laughs> so, so far I've been giving you guys credit, but uh, not anymore. For now, I, want, I mean, I want you guys to do your own work because it's important that you understand the concepts, not just copy down how to do it. Uh, all right, guys, have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week. I wish you all the best. Stay safe, stay, stay, stay healthy, <laughs> and I will talk to you in the near future. All right, guys, bye.